Hi, it's uh, Dr. Victoria Skirbo back with you uh, to continue to discuss 2017. Uh, last video I uh, talked about the universal year of 10 slash 1 and uh, some of the ramifications of that. So what I think I want to talk about today is some of the astrological patterns that are occurring and um, there are a couple uh, this year, this coming year, 2017, that will be very active, and uh, I think a a good um, review of the energy uh, uh, connected to this aspectual pattern, and maybe a discussion of the different uh, variables and what that's going to mean for us. And so, let me grab um, my thing here. Again, hopefully you can see this. Um, let me try here. Okay, I think you can see this. So, sorry for the terrible camera work. <laughs> I do this all by myself, and uh, this is not my thing. This is my thing. This is not necessarily my thing. So, um, one of the major astrological patterns occurring this year is a cardinal T-square. Now, what does that mean? Well, cardinal is a description of the type of energy that certain signs of the zodiac um, possess. Cardinal is an energy of initiation. And so whenever we have a preponderance of cardinal signs, either um, active in the skies or even active in your own chart, um, you are here to initiate something. And of course, initiation is something new. So we're 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 moving into something new, which is, you know, quite goes along with that one year, which is about uh, starting something new. And the T square is a geometric relationship between different points, different planets in the sky. Now, T squares are kind of like three-legged tables. Um, they're much more unstable than, say, a four-legged table. A four-legged table would be more of a, um, a metaphor for a grand square, which we've had a number of over the uh, past few years. But, but the particular aspect we're talking about right now is the T-square. And so uh, we have, and so with T-squares, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of action. A T-square is made up of two squares and an opposition. Oppositions bring awareness and the squares bring movement. And so we have awareness and movement, awareness and movement, awareness and movement, making it a very active pattern. Now, um, the planets associated with this T-square in 2017 is Pluto and Capricorn, Uranus and Aries, and Jupiter and Libra. Now, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008, and last video I said I would check to see when it goes out of Capricorn. It actually moves out for good of Capricorn in 2024 and will not be there for another, say, 240-odd years. So it's, that's it <laughs> for a long time. Last time Pluto was in Capricorn was the 1700s, 17, um, 1770s. Uh, seven, uh, late 1760s, I believe, in 1770s. In fact, the United States has a Pluto and Capricorn. So this is going to be a very uh, interesting time to be in America because America will be having its Pluto return in uh, 2022. So um, we'll talk about that as we go because that's part of uh, some of the things I want to talk about uh, as the year progresses. And so um, we have Uranus in Aries. Uranus has been in Aries since 2010, and we'll move out of Aries in 2018. And um, then we have Jupiter in Libra. Jupiter spends about a year in a sign, and, and is going to be in Libra from September 2016, so it's there now, uh, to October of 2017. So we have two very slow-moving planets, and then we have a relatively... Uh, faster moving planet with Jupiter. Pluto takes about 248 years to go around the zodiac. 
Uranus takes 84 years to go around the zodiac, and Jupiter takes a year to go, 12 years to go around the zodiac, one year, approximately one uh, year per sign. So, what does this mean? Well, let's just, um, before we get into the T-square, I want to talk about the general energy of these planets. So let me see if I can um, move this again and get a better view. Um, and really, you don't have to see this. Okay, I can't really tell. I'm sorry about this. Okay, let's, let's try this. All right, let's talk about Pluto and Capricorn for, for a little bit. Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008. And uh, Pluto is the planet associated with death and rebirth, transformation. Um, I liken uh, Pluto is is considered a transpersonal planet, meaning that it's uh, it it's beyond the personal level, although it certainly uh, affects us personally. But it generally affects us personally through changes and shifts in the culture. Um, that we are living in, or the, just the planetary setup that we're living in. And when Pluto moves through Capricorn, it's transforming the whole power structure of how things are. And so um, Pluto, as an archetype of transformation in the sign of Capricorn, which is the structure of um, power, okay? Capricorn also deals with how we utilize energy, or utilize resources, actually, even more so. And so Capricorn as the, um, is the archetype of the boss, the manager, you know, the, um, the person in charge. And Capricorn rules government, and Capricorn rules large institutions like banks, and uh, religious institutions, and uh, educational institution, so any institution that has power over a population. And with Pluto moving through that sign, what's occurring is that any structures that no longer serve are coming down. Now, there can be structures that also serve that are coming down as well. Pardon me, I'm sorry about that. I'm back. Told you this was low tech. <laughs> I should just put the phone outside, right? Okay. So Pluto and Capricorn is the energy of transformation of the structures of power. And so when Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008, the first thing that happened was that we almost had a total collapse of the economy. And so we got to see what the economy really was. It is pretty much smoke and mirrors and it's based on debt. <laughs> so so um, there is really nothing backing money, right? It's just this thing we all agree on. So that's pretty, uh, pretty scary as it were. And um, things have not changed all that much um, since 2008. And uh, let's just say Pluto is not done with the banking industry. But let's, I'm not going to, um, I don't want to be an alarmist here. I just want to explain the energy. Okay. Uranus in Aries. Uranus in Aries, it moved into Aries in 2010. And uh, moved into Aries, spent a little time, a couple months in there, moved back out into um, Pisces, spent a little time in Pisces, and then moved out, and then in 2011 actually moved into Aries. That occurred, um, I think it was April of 2000. Don't don't um, don't quote me on that. But what I'll tell you, uh, what happened when uh, um, Uranus moved into Aries uh, and stayed there and has been there since. Um, well, right at the point where Uranus was shifting signs from Pisces into Aries was the day of the uh, what was it 9.1 earthquake in uh, Japan and the t and the tsunami and then the and then the aftermath of that tsunami. So when Uranus was at the very, very end of Pisces, and Pisces rules the oceans, and Uranus is sudden out of nowhere, who would expect it? There was this huge tidal wave, or tsunami, because of the earthquake that occurred in the sea, um, that uh, swept over Japan. And by the time 
Uranus moved into Aries, we had a nuclear meltdown at Fukushima. And Uranus, uh, and the, and the, the um, uh, you know, astrology, and you know, God has a sense of humor, I guess, the um, fuel in that, um, in that particular plant was uranium. And uranium and Uranus, it's the same. It rules, it rules radioactivity. Uh, Pluto rules radioactivity. Uh, splitting the atom was a plutonic thing. And here we have um, this, this, this change and shift into, uh, into Aries. And then we had a, a meltdown, which uh, we are still having. I mean, you don't hear about it, but it is having its um, consequence, as is many of the um, uh, natural disasters, man-made natural disasters. I mean, we have the natural disasters, but then they hit what man has made, and it makes it that much worse. And so we are really in a pickle with that. Again, not to be an alarmist. So Uranus is in Aries until 2018. And then we have Jupiter. Now Jupiter spends about a year in a sign, as I said, and it is in Libra now. It went in in um, September 2016. September was quite the month, 2016. There was eclipses at that time. I don't know if you remember that. Um, and we'll be there till 2017. So, so Jupiter in this particular T-square is the fastest moving planet, but it sits in, in Libra for about a year. So uh, we have uh, at least the beginning, or uh, I think till about uh, August, maybe even October, we have this energy of the T-square. At times it will be exact, and at times it will sort of move off, but it is still there. It still is the energy, it still is the engine, excuse me, of change that we're going to experience. Now, what does Jupiter do? Jupiter is the expansion principle. Okay, it's an expansion, but it is a social planet. Both Uranus and Pluto are what we call transpersonal planets. And so there is, a, we're, un, we're uh, mostly unconscious of their activity unless they're affecting us personally and then collectively. And we're certainly all getting uh, hit, um, certainly all collectively and f some of us personally. And so with uh, the, but with Jupiter is a social planet. And so Jupiter deals with the um, experiences that we have as we interact um, on the social level with one another. And Jupiter is in Libra, and Libra is about uh, dialogue, and it's also about listening. And so with Jupiter in Libra, we are being required to not only dialogue with one another, but to listen. And I think that's sort of the missing piece. Now, there is going to be a slant on these, on these talks about uh, concerning um, I live in America, and we're right now in, in quite a um, transformational place in this country. And so a lot of what I will talk about, maybe on the political level, will come from the fact that I'm an American. So um, I apologize to anybody who's like, enough with America. But, uh, you know, this is where I live, and this is my experience, and this is what I can um, can share with you. And so... In America, you know, <laughs> we're a very divided country. And so we need to really communicate and listen to each other when it comes to um, if we want to come together and, and move through this change. I mean, we're going to have the change. We might as well move through this change with as much grace uh, as we can. So... Um, so that's what I want to say. I didn't talk about Uranus, so let me go back to Uranus. Uranus and Aries here. I don't know, can you see that? No, it doesn't matter. Uranus and Aries. So Uranus is the energy of breaking free from the constraints of Saturn. Uranus blows things apart. It's, you know, obviously it, that's what happened with uh, when it changed signs. We had some explosions and, and, and some sequelae from that. And... Um, but as it moves through Aries, what it has been doing is it has been waking us up to who we are. Aries is the I am. And with Uranus there, we are waking up to who we are. And who are we? We are spirit. We are spirit with physical bodies. Okay? 
and we're here to do something in our physical bodies. It's very easy to want to just sort of escape and sort of stay up in the ethers. But we, you know, that Aries energy is the first house energy is us of who I am. And it's almost as with Uranus and Aries, the alarm clock is going up, off so we can figure out who we are. And we are spirit having human experience and needing to do human things in order to move forward and evolve. And that's really what this all is. Um, cardinal stuff is evolutionary. It's, we're moving to a new level. Okay, so we'll do a little bit more about this. I'll be right back and we'll talk about the T-square. Hi, I'm back. So, um, Let's look at the T-square here, and what I've done is I've put the T-square on a natural chart, meaning that a natural chart is one in where Aries, zero degrees of Aries is at the uh, ascendant, and um, each uh, house is 30 degrees, and so the zodiac is in its natural place, and so we can see here what is going on uh, with this. Now, one thing I want to mention is that um, whenever you're dealing with the cardinal houses, and the cardinal houses are the uh, houses associated with um, the seasons, okay, and it is, it is considered the sort of the backbone of the chart. And so we have Aries here in the first house, and Aries is the I am. On, in the seventh house here, which is opposite of the, um, of the Aries house, is the Libra house. This is the we are house, or the how we relate. So this is I am, we are. So this is the axis of identity. We also have the other two um, uh, signs associated, uh, the uh, cardinal signs, are Cancer and Capricorn. And Cancer is the sign associated with home and family and clan. And Capricorn is the sign associated with uh, the outer world and authority in the outer world. And so we have uh, outer authority and inner authority. This particular axis, okay, and in a chart this would be the uh, MC or the zenith of the chart and this would be the IC or the nadir of the chart. Um, this is the axis of security. So we have the axis of identity and the axis of security. Inner security, emotional security, family, clan, outer security, how we, uh, how we uh, work out in the world. And so what's happening with the cardinal T-square and all the cardinal energy that we've had, and this cardinal T-square has been going on since about um, 2010. I mean, it started in 2008 when Pluto moved into uh, to Capricorn, things started to move, but it really started to get its, its teeth in. Uh, in 2010. At that time, we had Uranus and Aries, um, Pluto and Capricorn, but over here um, we actually uh, had Jupiter and Cancer. And so instead of looking like this, it looked more like this. Okay? We had a cardinal T-square at that time, and that started the whole um, uh, transformational process that we've been going on that's been going on since then so back in 2010 the open spot was Libra we did have Mars move through that that place at that time and so we had an active we actually had a, a, a grand t-square I mean a grand square with uh, Ju um, was it Jupiter Jupiter was in cancer no wait a minute what was in Cancer? I'm trying to think. Jupiter. Actually, I think Jupiter was in Libra. I, I can't do this right now. So I'm just going to make a correction. <laughs> Jupiter was actually in Aries in 2010, so it was conjunct Uranus. We had Pluto and Capricorn. What was in Libra, and I knew something was in Libra when Saturn was in Libra. Okay, so that was the beginning of things. Right now Saturn is in Sagittarius and uh, will be there um, uh, all year. 
And then at the end of the year, it moves into Capricorn up here. Okay, so you can just well imagine. All right, we'll get to that later. Um, and so at that time, 2010, um, the the only place of the that was open was where it's open now the, of this T square. So the the sign that had nothing in it was um, Cancer. And so for my Cancer uh, folks, <laughs> it has been a very challenging. Um, challenging time for us, hasn't it? What's interesting is that the United States is a cancer country and we've been, you know, as a country going through uh, an identity crisis and a security crisis. Now, as a, as a cancer country and as a cancer myself, um, when we feel insecure, we tend to uh, go into our shell and we tend to hide. And then we come out with our little clippers blazing. Okay, and we tend not to like move forward, but sideways and backwards. You know, the crab doesn't have the ability to move forward. Cancer is an archetype of coming to understand our feelings. It's the first of the water signs, so it's the first time we we actually interact with our feelings, and so it's a very tender place. And so we're all feeling very um, sort of victimized by by life in a way. Um, you know, we're just these, these sweet little crabs that just want to take care of everybody and, 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 and nurture people and feed them. And, you know, we keep getting, you know, hammered by these energies. So if that feels like something that you're experiencing or certainly something you can see in the collective, um, especially in cancer countries, um, uh, um, I believe um, Canada is also a cancer country. Okay. Uh, England is an actually a Capricorn country, but you know they are f seeing the changes and the shifts as well. Um, so this is not an easy time, and seeing as you know America is the most powerful country in the world, as goes America, kind of so does the rest of the world, only because we are considered the most powerful, not because we're um, more evolved, certainly. Uh, but, you know, we are a young country, and we're going to have our Pluto return, and we're going to either evolve or we're going to uh, dissolve. So um, that's why, it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'd like to do these little talks, because I think we need some perspective and perhaps uh, a way forward, you know, um, by looking at the stars and the energies that we have. So we have this T-square. And so we are again being challenged, everybody, our identity and our security. And what's open in this T-square is cancer. And so we need to look within ourselves. We need to find inner security. Now Pluto as the, as the sign, uh, uh, Pluto as the, as the archetype um, of transformation in Capricorn, which is outer authority, okay? Um, when we're looking at soul evolution, we look to the polarity point of Pluto. And as Pluto moves through Capricorn, the polarity point of Capricorn is Cancer. And so in order for us to evolve, we do have to come to a sense of inner security, inner emotional security, and come to love and appreciate that part of ourselves. Cancer is associated with the mother. And the mother of all of us is Mother Earth. And so in order for us to evolve, we must evolve as souls on this planet, we must come to love Mother Earth. We must come to love that soft, um, that softness in us and, and, and our need to uh, take care of each other. And that is really the thing that's going to move us through this time um, as the powerful shall fall. You know, Pluto in Capricorn, the powerful will fall. You know, that whole thing in the Bible, the meek shall inherit the earth. Um, that's great, but what kind of earth is the meek going to inherit? You know, are the, are the unmeek going to like just shit over everything and then we get the shit? Thank you very much, but no. <laughs> so it's time to uh, fight for the right to live. And in closing today... I know I said a lot. Uh, in closing today, um, I just wanted to say that the feminine 
is rising. The energy of the feminine is rising. And the energy of the masculine is, is doing this. So the masculine is up here. The feminine is here. This is what's happening. Okay? It's not about this. Okay? It's about equality. The Aquarian age is about equality. And the equality of the masculine and the feminine. And so a lot of patriarchal structures have to come down. And Capricorn is the archetype of the patriarchy. And Pluto is in there and breaking it down. So for us in America, as we face a Donald Trump presidency, I don't even like saying the words, but I, I have to be real, right? Um, we are at the cusp of the whole, the, the, the structures of powers being turned on its head. Now, as of this point, Donald Trump is putting in all kinds of um, I call it a clown car of, of, of people who want to like just break everything and then of course break it and then make money doing it and then what they're going to do with the money I don't know I mean don't they have enough but that's okay try not to get too political here but Donald Trump is actually a, a Iranian figure he is the wild card in this and so it's, it's uh, and, and, and a destabilizing force. So he's sort of the ultimate destabilizing force that's actually going to take the, the, the place of the most powerful person on the planet. I'm sorry for the rest of the world. I'm sorry with all my heart. I can honestly say this. I, I, I did all I could. Um, okay, I'm sorry. So, so, uh, that's, let's wrap that up there. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this T-square. There's another aspect that's going on right now um, that is in part connected to this T-square. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll, we'll look at that separately and then we can put it together. So the next time we're together, I think what I'd like to talk about is something um, that's going on as a conjunction uh, between Uranus and Eris. Eris is a trans, um, is a is a is a um, um, a planet further out in the Kepler belt. The first Kepler belt planet that we discovered was Pluto. Um, this um, Eris is further out. Pluto takes two hundred and fifty years to go around the zodiac. Eris takes five hundred, so it's you know twice the time it takes for Pluto. So we have a, a conjunction between Eris and Aries, and then we have a trine between uh, Saturn and uh, Eris-Aries conjunction. And we'll talk about that next time. So uh, I hope you got something out of this. Um, I will continue to try. I will try to do these weekly. Uh, if you have any questions about this, if you would like to call me or talk to me or email me, I can be reached at vicky at thesseedsoftransformation.com. I'm going to be posting these um, videos on my website, and so I would suggest, if you want, that you look at them from the beginning to get a fuller picture of what I'm talking about, because I'm going to refer back to them. So, um, again, it's been it's been a pleasure. If you like this video, please press the like button. If you, I would love for you to share this information. If you find it helpful for you, perhaps somebody else will find it helpful for them. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.